Hi, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golda from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Bill Prater. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing excellently, John. Thanks. And Bill is from the Business Mastery Company in Bellevue, Washington. Uh, so, Bill, today we want to talk about how to not just set goals, but how to execute against your goals. And this is uh, good timing as we're coming to the end of the year. So, People are probably going to be setting goals for uh, for 2020. And if they're smart, probably looking back at the goals they set in 2019 and seeing if they actually reached any of them or reached all of them or whatever. So um, setting and executing against your goals, what are some of the fundamental things that you need to do when approaching goal setting? So I think uh, one of the cornerstones is to uh, differentiate between, if you will, long-term goals. You mentioned 2020, to me, mm -hmm. in a relative uh, terms, that's a long-term goal. Uh, so, for example, uh, I may be in sales and I'd set a goal of, let's say, a million dollars increase in my territory for 2020. Well, that's a long-term goal. So, you know, step one is to break, break the, the goals down so that they correspond with some sort of an accountability cycle. So if we're having weekly, for example, meetings, accountability meetings, I'd want to have the goals that I'm setting be due or uh, the due date is on or before the, the date of the accountability meeting. So that's kind of two parts. Part one, mm -hmm. chunk the goal down so it coincides with whatever accountability cycle you can establish with yourself and your team. And then two, make sure that the goals that you have are due before that date. And it's interesting because I think that's one of the things, that's one of the parts where people fall down on goals, I think in general, and it's not just in business, I think in personal goals is the accountability piece, right? It's yes. because, you know, if I set goals, but I never tell anybody about them and uh, I have nothing to hold me accountable to them, it's pretty easy. I mean, I can set the goals, but uh, I've always got to get out clause because basically I'm the only one who knows about them, right? Um, or I, even if you set goals in, in business, but you don't have that accountability piece set in, you don't have that check-in time, or, or you just have a general update where you go, oh, yeah, that goal, well, we'll just move that a couple of months. So the accountability piece is, of, is something that I feel is missing a lot of the time. It is. Well, it's, if you've got a, uh, uh, if you're in the business that has an accountability culture, mm -hmm. by accountability, I mean, uh, authentic accountability, uh, it's not, hey, John, here's what you need to do for me. And then if you let me down, then I uh, browbeat you. That's not accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, that's browbeating. So if, you, if you're lucky enough to be in an environment where you've got that already built into the culture, that's great, and it makes it much easier to, on a consistent basis, set goals and then deliver on the goals, set a better goal next time and deliver on that and get that cycle going. And, and John, frankly, uh, if you look at any industry, uh, you know, just look at the bell curve, most companies, most businesses are in the middle someplace. They're an mm -hmm. average player in some yeah. industry. But then if you look at the... Uh, at the, at the, if you will, the, the right side of the bell curve, where the real great players are, all of them have some sort of accountability cycle going on. Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 I totally agree. Uh, I think the funny thing about accountability is, though, uh, Bill, is that you'll often find is everybody agrees that accountability is important, right? Yes. But normally they feel it's it's about holding you accountable as opposed to holding myself accountable. And that's where accountability has to start with yourself, right? <laughs> that's beautiful. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Because there's really two sides of accountability. One is, mm -hmm. is for me to commit to you. And the yeah. other side is for you to believe that I'm going to actually deliver on that. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't believe me, you'll wait until I deliver or not. And, and if you're used to me letting you down, you won't take the handoff. You won't be ready to go. You'll instead say, wow, Bill, for the first time ever, you actually delivered. <laughs> so it's definitely two parts. One's making yeah. the commitment, and I say to yourself and to other people, and then two, uh, of empowering the other person, typically down the pipeline a bit, uh, the other person to uh, be able to hold you accountable, and then they become used to you 
delivering. When they become used to you delivering, then their performance goes up. They'll get yeah. started before you show up because they know you're going to be on time with uh, goods. Yeah, and I guess the uh, another part of it too is is when it comes to goal setting. I mean, often people either set unrealistic goals, too vague goals, or maybe goals that are too easy. But so when it comes to actually setting goals, what are some of the parameters you should be looking at so you set really good goals, ones that stretch you a little bit, but they're not uh, unachievable, are, are detailed enough, they're not overly complicated, but they're not too vague either? Uh, so uh, I, I like, if I'm, if I'm facilitating a team, Mm-hmm. Uh, I give people an image of, uh, let's say, baseball or softball, where you start with a T and the ball's on the T. So I'll say, hey, John, let's set goals that are equivalent to having a ball on the T. Then if I see you start delivering, then I'll, I'll throw it up in the air in front of you and see if you can hit that. And then if you start doing that, I'll go out to the pitcher's mound and I'll throw you soft ones. If you start hitting those, then we'll get a college level pitcher come in. And if you can start hitting those, we'll find a major leaguer for you. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a team, then you can play that game. And I always do. But once I start seeing where somebody is, uh, I like to see them have about a 75% success mm-hmm. ratio, John. So right. then they get used to winning. If the goals are lofty and they only hit 10, 15% of them, nothing's going to happen. If the goals are too low and everybody's hitting all of them, well, you're never going to have a business like the one that, you, that, you, that you're an executive mm-hmm. in, for example. Yeah, I like that. I like that concept. So the fact is that you're really looking to see what people uh, have, the, have the capability to achieve the and then stretching yes. it a little. And then stretching it a little, rather than treating everybody the same, which is another mistake people make, right? Yeah. Is that they treat everybody as if they're exactly the same. I think that's absolutely right. And it's the wrong way to go. It's, it's kind of like the way, at least I went to school. Everybody was treated mm-hmm. the same. The truth is, if we can figure out a way to differentiate player to player to player and then have the goals and the accountability match up well, then people get used to winning. Uh, I also like to say to people, if you want to see goals being accomplished on a consistent basis, go visit a kindergarten. (laughs) Because they're all happy, they're excited, the teacher's got goals set in front of them that they can do, they're having fun hitting them. And uh, But if you go into some universities, that's not the deal. (laughs) No, absolutely, it's not. And then, what is? How do you uh, make sure the goals stay on track? I mean, you've got the accountability, you've got the check-ins. Like, how do you? If things aren't going well, how do you advise people how to remediate or get things back on track? So, I think there's three parts to this. One is setting the goal itself. Mm-hmm. Two, delivering uh, the goal, and it's either uh, it's either a hit or a miss. In other words, mm-hmm. if I say to you, John. I'm going to close Acme Construction Company. I either do it or I don't. Yeah, uh, yeah. The fact that uh, there was a cat in the street and I had to put on my brakes and things, all of that drama is not valuable. So set the goal and then report in yes or no. That's A, B, it's binary. But, but the third part, I think the part that uh, you actually alluded to it earlier, the third part that's often missing is what's the appropriate action to take? Mm -hmm. And one that is not appropriate is I'm going to move it down the road or it's a carry forward or Mm -hmm. whatever. And I mean, that's not acceptable. What's acceptable would be something in my case of missing this sale is for you to say, okay, Bill, good. So in addition to closing the sale you promised to me in November, what else are you going to be doing in December? So Mm -hmm. uh, I call that that would be corrective action. The other appropriate action is if I actually bring it in, if it's a big deal, we'll have a big celebration. If it's part of my quota, we say, good job, Bill. So Mm -hmm. it's the goal, it's the accountability, and it's the appropriate action. If you get those three pieces, you get the cycle going, uh, and uh, it, it really raises the performance of everybody. 
Yeah, because uh, exactly what you were just saying there about just rolling things forward. I think that is, I think that's something that afflicts a lot of organizations. And we probably, and we're all guilty of it at different times as well, is that, you know, that idea of, oh, well, we didn't achieve it, but there's always next month. And and to your point, instead of saying, okay, now next month, we have to do what we're supposed to do this month, plus what we're supposed to do next month. So now we've got a tougher month. Instead of just saying, oh, well, we didn't do that this month. Correct. We'll just worry Correct. about next Correct. month. And there's, yeah. No, yeah. there's no accountability, really. Well, it's also, uh, I mean, we mentioned earlier about this. There's usually multiple people involved in something. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're the head of manufacturing and I'm in the sales force and I tell you I'm going to close this piece of business, well, are you going to design it yeah. before I bring the order in? Well, if, if you're used to me always rolling things forward, you won't do anything uh, in, on the plant floor because you'll say that <laughs> guy's crater never delivers. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but if, if I'm used to saying, here's what I'm going to do, and you know I'm going to deliver it, you'll get started with the custom design. And if you do that, everything speeds up, everything goes faster. We move our business from being an ordinary one to a preeminent one. And it's a great point you make there because that's the, the inconsistency can really uh, ruin a business long term. Because in the example you're talking about there, so say you're a bit of a hit or miss uh, and you say, oh, I'm bringing in Acme Corporation next month. And I say, OK, I could start I could start building those 500 units. But hey, I know Bill, he might bring it in. He probably won't. And therefore, I don't build the units. And surprise, surprise, you actually bring in the deal. And now we're behind the curve in yep. delivering sure. to the customer. So there's a knock on. A, a, inconsistency has a huge knock on effect, right? Oh, yeah, that's I love that. It knock, not yes, it, it rolls down the road. And, and now we're going to have a, a quality problem, maybe, because now mm-hmm. we've got a deadline Rush. to hit yeah. on delivery. We deliver it. The customer calls up, says, hey, John, what's the story with these parts? They're painted blue. I want it black. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we're giggling about it here. But it's, uh, one, it's serious. And two, unfortunately, the vast, vast majority of businesses operate this way we're giggling. And yeah. very few of them, just the ones at the top of the market, are the ones that operate the way that they should. Yeah. Accountability, delivering on time, errors low, all of that. Yeah, because that's the that's the hard work. At the end of the day, that's the real hard work is being properly organized, being accountable, doing all the right things. To be honest, it's easy to to kind of just skate by and try and fly by the seat of your pants, isn't it? And uh, unfortunately, that only gets you so far. As you say, that's why most companies are in the middle of the bell curve. <laughs> Yes. Um, So, Bill, in the last couple of moments we have here, is there anything else that you'd like to mention about goal setting and executing on goals that you think is important for our listeners? Yeah, I think uh, the the, kind of the wrap up is that all of everything we've said should be documented. Mm -hmm. So we should have uh, I use the terminology vital driver uh, dashboard, vital driver dashboard. But what it really is, it's, it's taking all the data points, maybe the KPIs, et cetera, all those inputs, and then having sort of what I call a, a, uh, a pop-up screen. It's like a, on the dashboard of, your, of some of the newer cars. It's what's the vital things. Maybe mm-hmm. it's revenue. Maybe it's gross margin. Maybe it's our closing ratio. Maybe it's the time, average time a, a deal spends in a certain stage of the pipeline. So, uh, so keeping track of all of these goals, if you will, look, look them all together, they're all goals. Keeping track of those, then, John, when things start moving from green to yellow to red, we need different kinds of goals. So I use it as a tool to basically prompt people to, to create goals. So. If, for example, if our return target is getting missed, we're getting too many returns, somebody needs to say, I'm going to fix that problem. That Mm -hmm. converts to a goal, which we write down. And then a a, a month from now, if you will, when we have our accountability meeting, we're going to expect delivery on that 
on that goal that was committed. So that's really the final point is all yeah. of this has to be documented. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it comes back to the point then that you need to really focus on the key, most important things, because if you try to track too many things, you'll have the opposite effect. And the other well, part yeah, I'm is... I'm not against if, tracking them, but I'm against uh, chasing them all to the root cause. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, obviously, if, if everything is a priority, then nothing's a priority. So you've got to really correct Good. make sure nice. that you have those identified. Well said, well said. Yeah. Well, listen, Bill, before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. So my company called Business Mastery uh, has, a, um, has a, a, a core sort of foundational principle, which we call scaleology, scaleology. And, and what it is, it's that if you're going to be a preeminent business, you need three things. Number one is you need to have a mindset of, of if you will, market mastery. So, for example, uh, your company, Pipeliner, well, mm -hmm. if it can develop an image throughout the company that says there's no reason in the world we can't be number one, mm -hmm. well, then that's step one. I call that mindset. Step two is they have a management system. And we talked about it. We spent the last 15 minutes talking about this whole concept of, of goals and accountability. Yep. That's a management system. And then the, the, the third piece that my, my business works on is developing high performance teams mm -hmm. and high performance teams are the ones that you have described a couple of times. The ones that set high level goals, deliver them on time. Everybody expects these goals to be delivered on time. The team performs at a higher and higher level. And then frankly, uh, that's how they get to be number one in their market. Yeah, no, that's great. And we'll have all the information about Bill uh, will be along with this uh, video, with his profile. So listen, Bill, it's been great talking to you on this uh, Friday afternoon. Hope it's, uh, hope it's a nice, uh, nice evening up there in Washington. Well, at this very moment, I happen to be in Arizona. Oh, well, there you go. So it will be a lovely evening in Arizona. It is, it is, in fact, a lovely <laughs> evening. It's bright and sunny and clear. Excellent. Yeah, I love Arizona. All right. Well, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.